Hey everyone, my name is Eduardo. For those who don't know me, uh, I was asked to do the, um, the topic of a man and his sexual purity um, today, and um, I just want to say it's it's been a really good study for me um, as I am also approaching that um, that date of of marriage, and I found it very very um, benefiting to my soul, to my um, to my heart. I hope it is to you, and I pray God just blesses you with 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 His words um, from Scripture and uh, through maybe my narr narration of my understanding of it. Um, so let's get started. Um, today's date, um, we have uh, a redefined um, and, and transfigured, uh, you know, definition of what it means to be sexually pure. Uh, or just um, sexuality uh, and God created that to be a beautiful and fulfilling thing um, within the right context obviously um, but but it's part of our nature and and this just uh, re reshaping reinventing the wheel kind of thing uh, of, of what it means to be sexually pure uh, has really just unveiled how prideful and fragile our humanity, our human nature is. Um, it tells us right away that we really need Jesus, um, you know, and and obviously that's made clear through the scriptures, um, more so as, as this topic is talked about um, from beginning to end. Um, but, um, but it's very well depicted in God's word and uh, you know, it, it's a very vague um, topic, yet so clear, you know. Uh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, because because it is, it's, it's, it's just one of those things that, that God has an order for and has a context for and that, and, and you know, it, and He created it in, in, in a, with, within its boundaries uh, and it's meant to be a good thing. Um, Today's world just has completely um, reshaped that, and, and, and it's not God pleasing. Um, so, f but I think to start off, we need to understand why 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 are we talking about sexual purity? Um, I, I've I've come to understand that 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 you know it's not about you know what we think. Um, it, it might be, I, I think uh, we need to go back to the part where we understand that God in the Old Testament and in some parts, actually, I think it might only be this one place, but uh, in, in 1 Peter uh, 1, 15, um, where, where we are commended to be holy as God is holy and all over the Old Testament, we, we see be holy as I'm holy, right? Um, uh, as, as God speaks to his chosen uh, people and and we are part of that too um, through through Jesus um, so the same implications right um, though that we be holy in all we do um, to to what does it mean to be holy uh, would be another question is uh, to be holy is to be set apart to to be unclean um, I would think is is talking about the way that that God has ordered things, and the and the way that God has um, stated things are to be the way that they are, um, as the the culture and and the world um, shapes our um, our society's understanding uh, of 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 all things, um, especially talking about sexual purity is just um, it's not what God intended it to be today, but and that's why we're called to 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 adhere to this, be holy as I am holy, um, to set ourselves apart from the world, to live countercultural, God-pleasing lives. And and we can go to Romans 12. Um, Romans 12 talks about offering our bodies, or Paul urges us to, to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Um, and, and that, you know, through the renewing of our minds, we'd be transformed and and that way, then we also know uh, the will of God even better. Um, and, and, and you really can only accomplish this 
if you're inhaling daily um, the presence of God, uh, because what other way can you can you know how to be holy, right? Uh, the only way that we can know how to be holy is by um, by living in the presence of God and just um, you know taking it all in uh, and, and just hearing His words, hearing His cries, commands, decrees, everything that's in the Scriptures is 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 God breathed uh, uh, as um, some scripture in the New Testament would say, and I can't, I'm so bad at remembering scripture uh, citations. I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, and y'all can triple check me on this, but, but it's in there, I promise. Um, uh, uh, so, only by living in God's presence can we know how to be holy, um, which is, if we do, then we understand. Okay, so this is one. This is one thing that God calls us to be as holy as He is holy, to be set apart, right? Um, and that it, that has implications for sexual uh, purity. Um, and, and so, let's dive in deeper. Um, uh, another thing I want to I want to point out is that uh, as we are ambassadors of Christ, right? Um, as Second Corinthians uh, five sixteen through twenty one would say, um, we want to bear the characteristic of God uh, to 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 the witnesses of the world, right? Uh, to those who are seeing us daily in our walk with God, um, and, and to be sexually pure, to be set apart in that um, in, within its boundaries, its context, and we'll get more more into that in a little bit, um, but. In order to show the world what it what it means to be someone who believes in God and not just believes but follows His word, uh, to to be a man of God, you have to be an ambassador of Christ, and and, and your image has to bear uh, His image, and, and it must be done so in a correct and and God pleasing way. Um, so uh, that's another little. Thing. Thing is we are ambassadors so people need to see the aspects of God through us uh, we're image bearers um, okay so why do I need to abstain from non-god prescribed sexual practice right um, uh, first of all I would say uh, you know that's a typical question and then um, it's not really about uh, you know abstaining because it almost seems like you're you're forced to do it um, when really it's it's just God has ordained this way and he just wants you to be obedient uh, obedience over sacrifice right um, God God says in in I think it's first Samuel 15 uh, 22 and 23 uh, that he is more pleased in, 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 in obedience than in sacrifices um, uh, you know as Prophet Samuel would say, uh, in his very words, um, to Saul. Um, yeah, so so God's order. We can go to Genesis eighteen uh, through twenty five, and I'd actually like to read that because it gives us, you know, kind of the the background, the the context we need for the study is. Um, and so, just bear with me. Um, eighteen is it eighteen? Oh, Genesis. Genesis 2, um, 18 through 25, I believe. Um, yeah, so it goes like this. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord had formed out of the ground all the wild animals, all the birds. Um, he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave... Names all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused a man to fall into deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs, and then closed up uh, the flesh with uh, the clo close up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. The man said, "This is now bone of my bones." 
uh, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Uh, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and, and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his, and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Um, so those actually the the last three verses, uh, the last four verses, uh, will be focused more onto. I'll focus more onto that um, while we while we study this. But uh, yeah, so basically, God created uh, man, and he had no helper, um, and so he takes a rib from Adam's uh, rib cage, uh, and, and and creates the woman. Um, uh, you know and. And then we get this order of, that is why man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. Um, and, and that talks about marriage. That's a covenant God created just then. Uh, the covenant of marriage uh, between a man, and a, wife, uh, a man and a woman, and they become one flesh. Um, right? And that, that speaks to more of the, the, the sexual aspect. Uh, they become one flesh, and they were both naked, and they felt no shame. Um, so that's a that's a typical uh, feeling, uh, not just in this in this instance because of uh, you know their their situation. They were still not marred by sin, so um, therefore they felt no shame. But but even as as we take it into the context of marriage, when it when it's done correctly, when it's done in the right context, that feeling of shame is not there. <laughs> you know. And I think it's a perfect uh, understanding of of of, of um, living sexually pure, uh, waiting for that moment to to be married to your spouse, to consummate in the in the sexual practice um, w with your wife, and and that, and and that is God pleasing. That is that is something God created, and and our culture has just uh, reshaped all of that and just made it something that it's not, and it's you know. It, we understand there are so many things out now that are, you know, they're just not God pleasing. But um, in that, um, we must understand that as we believers, more than anyone, have to adhere to this command. Um, that that this is the way that that um, that sexual purity works is in this context. And, and anytime the Bible talks about sexual immorality. It has gone away from this context. It it just it's just not in the picture, and that's why God, uh, that's why He condemns it. That's why He doesn't condone it. Is is because it, it strays away from His original ordained, you know, covenant um, of how this is all to be done in. Um, so therefore, anything that's outside of that order, uh, whether that's fornication, adultery, uh. You know, you can you can name so many things now today. Um, all of that, if it's not in God's order, then then it then it's against God. It is it is not pleasing to God. It is it is um it, it is like spitting in His face almost, saying like this doesn't work. You didn't you didn't do it right, and that's just not true. Um, so so we get this order right. Uh, and you know, I've already gone through it. Sex is a blessing um, in the right context. It, it is. Uh, there's. I, th I think that we have done such a poor job, um, and not not to berate anybody because I I feel like I I've just come to understand this is we haven't done a really we haven't done a well job explaining that that sex is not a bad thing, and we just tell our kids it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. And, and the, you know they grow up and they just think it's bad, and, and therefore their 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 intelligence, their their understanding of, of sexual interaction in the right context is is, is not a is not a thing they understand yet, uh, as it was for me, especially not living in a in, in a in a God a, a God centered home as a kid, um, but but now that I am. Um, God centered. Uh, this is this is my standard, and I, and I go by it. Um, another thing I have to point out before we get more into the other things is uh, responsibility. Um, I think is one of the most uh, clear things we see 
in the creation of man in in the beginning and then all throughout scripture um the reason why it says men so much in the bible is because it's first to the man right uh the order of responsibility um uh, it brings me to 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 this next point right uh man first then the woman uh, not to assume that the woman is not important or blessed in God's eyes because she is uh, but mainly to recognize that men lead by example uh, I believe this is the reason why we're talking about it is because we men uh, have realized that there's something wrong with our society and the only reason the only way to get back to uh, to a healthier understanding uh, or, or of, of God a, a healthier culture um, is for the man to get in, in his right place, um, and, and not that, <clears throat> not to say that 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 um, that we are to be brute and just you know controlling, but but in the way that we lead by example, then they follow too, right? Um, and and um, what it, what? So yeah, uh, because a woman is leaving her household too, like as we read in in the order of and just the beauty of 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 the covenant of marriage is um it says that a man leaves his father and mother right um and then is united to his wife but that also implies that the woman does that too and and we see this pattern of responsibility given to man first um first and foremost um because we are to lead our society we are to lead our women our spouses uh, our daughters uh, we we are to lead them in example, and not just by dictatorship or by by telling them what to do, because that's not the correct way. Uh, at least that's not what I understand from God's word. Um, so so this is the pattern, right? We we are called to 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 lead by example as men. Um, it's called a man and his sexual purity for a reason, right? Because there's the audience is men, obviously, but first and foremost. Um, so we hold the majority stake uh, when it comes to responsibility and giving um, giving account for our spouses as men, right? Um, especially if we are wanting to be men of God. Uh, and I and I and Ephesians five twenty five through thirty three is 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 a perfect place to go for that um, because it it tells us what what Jesus has already done and then. Obviously, if we are to men be men leaders, be be um, leading by example, then we need to know what example to follow, and that's Jesus Himself. Um, is 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 the reason also why He came down is to to show us how to be uh, men of, of God. Um, Twenty five um, through thirty three. I'm gonna read it real quick. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by washing w with water through the word and to present her to himself in, as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their body uh, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and, re um, and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you uh, also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So we have this order of things, right? Uh, again, repeated, and it's the same. It's the same um, scripture here. Uh, a man leaves his, his father and mother and is united. Right? Uh, it's it's being re re restated um, in Ephesians five twenty five um, through to thirty three. Um, and so, as men, we hold this responsibility is is to lead by example, and especially in sexual purity. Uh, now we're about to get into some of the realities and consequences of of of, of sexual uncleanliness, of sexual immorality, uh, and you have perfect examples in the booklet. I think that's all it really talks about is 
is consequences of sin, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but but in order to get a better context, I felt like I needed to go through all this first. So so here here it is, right? Um, the the reality and, and the consequences of our actions with within this context of 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 sexual purity. Um, okay. Uh, apart from the context boundaries God has put in place, uh, sexual sexual interactions will be more than not uh, be a stepping stone for the believer and even more detrimental a man of God. Right? Uh, I think a perfect example uh, that we see of just um, you know a wreck of consequences is that of David's with 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 Bathsheba, King David. Um, do you know he just. Uh, there is no explanation to that. It's clear as clear as day what he did wrong, um, and you know everyone debates this one. It's like uh, you know Bathsheba. It was Bathsheba's fault. Like you, you know she shouldn't have been out there bathing, but actually no, King David shouldn't have been you know slugging around uh, while his men went to war, um, and, and you know she plays a part in it too. Um, there is no like. Uh, there's no scripture in there that says that she didn't, um, she didn't, she, 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 she like restrained herself from that and she, you know, she was forced or anything like that. Uh, whereas another example later on, uh, with one of David's daughters and, and his, and his, and one of his sons, uh, where that's more vivid, but not in this, not in this context, um, of, of second Samuel chapter, all of chapter 11 is, is that whole story and how it went and how it goes down and and I just kind of wrote down the, the sequence of of I guess sin as 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 David proceeded to take Bathsheba another man's wife Uriah's wife um, uh, as he was in battle and and he was just kind of you know just uh, I don't know what he was doing he was just kind of uh, slugging being idle, I don't know um, how to explain that better, but um, uh, yeah, he's just fiddling in his palace, uh, palace, palace, <laughs> palace, and um, and and so all that happens because uh, you know we start right here, right? Um, yeah, so so first of all, he like. He started by 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 lusting after her, right? Um, he 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 lusted. He was he was coveting. Um, he abused his power as king. Uh, committed adultery in her heart first because he knew he was going to get what he wanted, and then proceeded into the sexual act. Um, then he tried to cover up his sin from the public. You know, trying to attempt to to get Uriah to sleep with his wife so that it would seem like it's Uriah's uh, kid, um, but doesn't work out. He doesn't sleep with her, and therefore now there's this big like, you know, fiasco of 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 just uh, you know a baby is is being conceived in the womb of Bathsheba, and David doesn't know how to get out of that. He doesn't. And, and he's so deep in a sin that that he that he resorts to 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 the you know the one one of the the things that is 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 commanded not to do. Um, in trying to cover up his sin, he, he creates more sin, and he he uh, he murdered he murdered uh, Uriah. Obviously, he didn't kill him, um, but he set him up to to, to fail. He put him in the front lines, and and therefore, your Uriah was, you know, he was instant kill. Um, and so, now, David's sin is hidden. You know, uh, he can marry her, blah blah blah, and and you know, once all the mourning has passed and all that, um, and, and you know, from that point forward, um, he, eventually, the prophet Nathan goes to him and. He, and he, and he tells him, hey, there's this guy that blah, 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 did this, did that, did this, that. David's like, where's he at? Where's he at? Um, uh, 
like he deserves punishment and then Nathan tells him like that's you man that that was you I was just talking about you and, and you're so blind to the sin of yours uh, of adultery of of how far you spiraled into this sin um, and, and therefore you know after after that you know you see he still has a kingdom but his family line just suffers and you know you you see it after that point uh, it affected not only his reign as king after that the reign it affected his family and it affected all of Israel of of, of course so um sexual impurity is has consequences uh, we also have uh, you know examples of uh, of uh, in today's day um of, of men raping uh, women and and therefore women are are shamed into this feeling that that this creature that's being conceived inside of them is 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 just almost demonic like like it, it was it's, it's not a gift this was punishment or something like that and therefore they abort they abort babies and and I don't I don't know what the percentage is but I uh, I heard it recently from um, Pastor John Piper talking about that in one of his most recent sermons, and 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 I just you know the the reason why we men should lead by example in sexual purity is so that these things don't happen, so that we don't have to spiral into the sin of murders, um, of murder or of or of abortion that are that is caused by this or anything of the such. And, and and we can only we can only stop these kinds of things from happening if we control ourselves if if we um, hold on to this design this order that God has already set in place um, and, and it's perfectly clear in in chapter two of Genesis um, in those verses that we read and and, and obviously in, in Ephesians, like we see all this and, and it's perfectly clear to us uh, what to do and what not to do is anything outside of those boundaries is, is not correct. Um, so, you know, that's why that's why God tries to place these laws, these these um, these commandments in, in his word is so that we can keep ourselves from filing all of God. Uh, all of God's uh, character, all of all of who He is, um, and so. Anyway, those are the realities and consequences, and obviously, then we have Proverbs six twenty four to twenty nine. Like, there is no return. And it's very costly um, to 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 be an adulterer. Um, the reason why Proverbs, why all those Proverbs talk to the to the son, obviously, is because. The king wrote it to the son, right? The, the Proverbs um, were written by, by mostly by Solomon, um, and so the, he's just handing these things off to his to his kid, to to his son. More specifically, is is because we, again this pattern of responsibility it belongs to the man, um, man first, and then the woman, obviously, um, as, as we see, you know, all these um, these scriptures in that booklet. Um, it almost seems like the woman is, is completely a fall here, but no, we have the responsibility. We need to take uh, a responsibility. We need to man up, right? And, 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 and know what our place is in this, in this battle against, um, sexual impurity, sexual immorality, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and before I go, I, I, I don't know how much time I have here, but before I go, uh, I, I want to leave with encouragement, and I and I and I you know, and I I want to make it clear, um, God desires obedience over sacrifice. Do not make it about sacrificing, you know, your sexual needs, sexual desires, um, in order to to seem like you're following God. No, rather do it out of obedience, knowing that this is the way God has set things. Um, from the beginning till now, and just because our culture is, is shape shifting and, and sh constantly, does not mean that that our standards also change from that. Uh, within the context of marriage, 
uh, of a man and a, uh, and a woman, um, we need to understand that this covenant of marriage is, is very, very symbolic to the gospel. It's very, it's very um, um, just, if God made it a covenant, that's how important it is to him. That's how important. And therefore, we need to take it um, seriously. We need, we, need to, we need to lead by example in that. And, and we need to restrain ourselves. Um, again, sex is a gift from God. It is a blessing in the right context. And we saw that context repeatedly. Um, so I'll leave with words of encouragement. And, and with that, I'll, I'll leave in Proverbs 5, 17-23. Um, and, and then we'll be done. Um, Proverbs 5, 17 through 23. I, and it goes like this. Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer, May her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Um, why, my son, be so intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom uh, of, of a wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and He examines all your paths. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. For lack of discipline they will die led astray by their own great folly. So so the encouragement here is for those of us who are married, who are about to be married, or are thinking of marriage, or or, or in your singleness, um, you know, th this... Another place in the Bible it says to, 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 um, to, to stay with, 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 uh, with the wife, or with, you know, with the wife of your youth, I think is what it's called. Yeah, so right here. Um, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. Rejoice in her. Be intoxic or be, um, uh, what's it called? What did it say? Um, be intoxicated with her love. Not with another man's wife. That I think that's, that's an amazing way to put it is, man, let your love grow for your wife. Uh, for us who are soon to be married, Love her now, as you would love her. Uh, obviously, with within the right context, uh, you cannot, <laughs> you know, get physical with her. But in your actions, uh, in, in your in your way, in the way that you speak to her, in the way that you treat her, in the way that you um, hold her, you know, treat her with respect. Be intoxicated by her love. Um, uh, I think that's very encouraging, and, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, but God has set an ordained way of, 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 of sexual purity, and we see that, and we've already talked about it. So I hope this was a blessing to you. I'm sorry for all the stuttering and just, you know, blank, but... um. I really hope that the Lord would speak to all of you and obviously he spoke to me first um, and as I head into the season of marriage uh, which will be for the rest of my life um, praise the Lord um, I, I, I just hope that we can adhere to these words and and rejoice in the wife of our youth right um, so with that I'll, I'll leave it there um, anyways I hope that you have a blessed day and that um, this was uh, very encouraging to, to us all. Um, see you guys.